I would like to offer a very warm welcome to our first annual Launchbox Ladies Pitch Competition. It is because of Lehigh Valley Launchbox and the Launchbox Ladies Council that we gather here this evening to celebrate innovation, creativity, and the entrepreneurial spirit. It is truly an honor to see these talented entrepreneurs joining us for this exciting event. My name is Cindy Evans, and I am the director of Launchbox Lehigh Valley. Last year, when Dr. Pendaputi came to campus, many of you may remember that she described the ABCs for success. A, academic preparedness, B, belonging, and C, cost. She describes these as her critical areas of focus. Leah Valley Launchbox, being part of Invent PA and the Pennsylvania State University System, also uses these ABCs as measures of our success to what we offer to our clients and the Lehigh Valley community. First, A, academic preparedness. Yes, we can offer academics to our entrepreneurs through our credit and our non-credit offerings here at Penn State Lehigh Valley, but I want to talk about preparedness. Leah Valley Launchbox offers preparedness through its many entrepreneurial programs. We conduct monthly programs such as brainstorming and mastermind. By utilizing our large networks of connections, we offer webinars to prepare our clients for what to expect when beginning and growing their business. Next, B for belonging. Our champions, advisors, board members, and ambassadors offer a place for entrepreneurs to belong and gain advice through mentoring, guiding, advising, and programming. Programming such as our Teen Entrepreneur Camp. This summer, we will provide 24 high school students with a week-long residential program so they gain entrepreneurial skill sets. This fall, we will again offer our online idea test lab, a program designed to assist individuals to do a deep dive into their ideas. It is designed to help them better understand the customer problems that they're trying to solve. Finally, C, cost. Let me talk about cost. We offer dozens of resources that are available free to Pennsylvania residents and businesses. It is our goal to connect Lehigh Valley entrepreneurs to the support, resources, and facilities that they need to build a sustainable and scalable business with a viable plan for growth by providing no-cost services we're helping entrepreneurs avoid the common mistakes startups often face and enable them to focus their time on their business. It takes courage to step outside the norm, to challenge conventions, and to embark on an uncertain path of entrepreneurship. And it takes courage to stand up here and pitch a product to the Lehigh Valley community. To the participants, I want to emphasize this is more than just a competition. This is a platform for growth, for learning, and for con connecting with like-minded individuals who share the same drive for success. So regardless of the outcome, seize this opportunity to learn from one another, forge new partnerships, and embrace the invaluable feedback you will receive. Judges, I have been communicating with these amazing individuals for the past month. I can tell you, 
You have a tough job. I am grateful to be standing here and not sitting there. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the chair of Launchbox Lehigh Valley, ladies, Launchbox ladies. Oh, I got all the way to the end, Catherine Bailey. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you so much for the enthusiasm and the, the spirit that you bring to our program. Um, I'd like to add a good evening. Um, as the chair of Launchbox Ladies, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you also, to also welcome you to our first annual pitch competition. This is something that has been a vision since we first began several years ago and created Launchbox Ladies. Throughout the year, Launchbox Ladies presents a speaker series to create informative, collaborative events to encourage, support, and inform all entrepreneurial-minded people in their journey. We look forward to starting that series with new topics come this September. Tonight, Launchbox Ladies and members of the Ambassador Circle are celebrating the efforts of some female entrepreneurs who are here to share their passion with you. We are here to celebrate their efforts as well as to contribute financial support towards their efforts. According to an American, Re American Express report, between 1972 and 2018, women-owned businesses grew from 402,000 to 12.3 million. Those are very impressive numbers, and we are here to ensure that those numbers continue to grow. We received over 18 applications and had a very difficult time bringing it to the five candidates who are here tonight. All the applicants were and are, were and are amazing. Our goal is to continue working with all of them to support them in their journey as they move forward. And I have to agree with Cindy, good luck, judges. <laughs> I want to personally thank Dr. Richardson, Cindy, the mentors who worked with our applicants, uh, all the behind the scenes help we got from IT and all the people here at Penn State, uh, as well as the judges whose tasks lie ahead for making this event so special. Today, more and more businesses are recognizing the value women bring to the leadership role. And so, what better time to introduce our leader, Dr. Tina Richardson, the Chancellor of Penn State Center Valley. So thank you so much, Catherine. Now, it's, it's always nice when you uh, have someone who's a friend introduce you because, you know, they, they um, pump you up and, and make you feel like you've done a lot of really important things. And they even mention some of those important things. And so um, thank you so much. When, when we started Launchbox Ladies, within Launchbox, um, I gathered a small group of women and I asked, can you help me come up with a way in which we can ensure and encourage that um, entrepreneurship is something that women who have interests reach out to, um, and especially students. And so um, many years later, we now have over 2,000 people supporting this um, initiative from the community. And this speaker series means a tremendous amount um, to everyone in this room and for those um, who, who have come across our resources and have decided to put them to good use. Um, why Launchbox Ladies? Well, we know that um, women-owned startups lag behind men, uh, coming in about 40% um, females versus 60% um, of the businesses created by men. 
We also know that more women um, start, up businesses, start up businesses from scratch, um, about 33%, versus those who um, buy existing companies. Um, that percentage is about 23%. A McKinsey Global Institute study found that advancing women's e equality could add $12 trillion to the global economy by 2025. If we were to address equality, think about that. In the best case scenario, that research also indicates that the number could jump to $28 trillion. We're here to do some good work for good reason. Women entrepreneurs um, report a, a wide array of, of motivations, and so I want to tell you what some of those motivations are. Clearly, some people want to be the boss. They want to own their own business. There may be some people in the room, I won't ask for a show of hands, but. Some of us want to be the boss. We're dissatisfied with other places we have worked. For example, there was dissatisfaction in corporate America. People were also ready to pursue their passion and turn their passion into a profitable situation. Some were also bored or financially insecure um, at the time they decided to start a business. They, were ready to, they weren't ready to retire because they didn't have the financial security that they um, desired. About 40% of women that started companies started companies with one to five um, employees. And another 40% of those who started businesses were solopreneurs. Over 10% of women-owned businesses have 20 or more employees far above the global average of 3%. And despite the challenges of business ownership, 74% of those women who started businesses said they're happy owning a business. They know that there are going to be challenges, and, and uh, they've identified some of the challenges. The most noteworthy of the, among the challenges is equal access to financing, regulations, and sufficient family support services as they launch their businesses. Other challenges that have come to, uh, to be well known is the idea that um, they're not being taken seriously. Um, it's hard to surround, um, you know, yourself with with a community of like-minded women um, who can help uh, boost your confidence. And so that's one of the reasons why Launchbox Ladies exist. Another issue that creeps in is that um, women are often socialized to be more collaborative. And so there seems to be an ongoing challenge to, to own or claim your talents, to claim your accomplishments. We have a tendency to, to distribute them amongst many people. It's not a bad thing, but it can often create challenges. A few more things that I will comment on. I'm not sure what's going on with the mic. If it goes in and out. Okay. I'll be loud. Balancing um, their business interests with their um, family life. That is for generations, for decades, for centuries, been an ongoing issue. But lastly, I would say building a support network. Uh, nearly half of uh, female founders say they're held back by the lack of mentors and advisors. And there again, this is where Launchbox Lady hopes to make a difference. The good news is there, there is an increase in women um, in women who launch businesses and in women's angel investment groups, in women focused investment firms, and gender smart impact investing. And so we're here to say and to, to connect people to resources that will allow them to succeed at the highest level. Right now, 
Pennsylvania is ranked sixth behind several other states in terms of supporting women entrepreneurship. Um, we're behind West Virginia, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Delaware, and Indiana. And I think Lunchbox stands a really good chance of changing the, the trends. And so today, we're excited to host our first annual startup pitch competition. I won't say exclusively for women, but it might look like it's exclusively for women, but many women-owned businesses are co-owned. And, and so we are supporting entrepreneurs. But the finalists today that will um, present their business ideas and concepts we're going to support them at the highest level. And so, that said, um, we represent in this room an opportunity to change the tone and tenure of entrepreneurship amongst uh, women in Pennsylvania. <coughs> so, I'm going to get off the stage, but not before I say a few more things. <laughs> I, I want to give you a little bit of background on our, on our judges. Um, first, Carol Obandu Dursey. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so Carol Obando Dursteen is currently a design supervisor in the data governance group at PPL. She has also served as project manager and regional affairs director at the company. Before PPL, um, Carol worked for U.S. Senator Bob Casey and in the nonprofit sector, including um, Skill USA Council. In total, she has 26 years of work experience in the nonprofit, public, and private sectors. Carol is a graduate of Penn State, just by coincidence. Um, I also would like to mention that she just recently earned a Master's of Engineering in Energy Systems Engineering from Lehigh University. See, I'm not biased. <laughs> and she is an outstanding contributor and supporter of all things entrepreneurship. Dr. Vasu Singh is our um, second judge, Dr. Vasu Singh practices family medicine in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. She also works for the UPMC Health Insurance Division as a medical director. Dr. Singh completed her medical school um, training in India and did her residency at St. Luke's Hospital. Dr. Singh has mentored so many um, students and um, medical graduates. She has served as the president of the Association of Physicians of Indian Origin in the Lehigh Valley chapter and is currently the regional director for New Jersey and Pennsylvania. If that is not enough, <laughs> she also serves as, as chair of the Health and well, uh, Well-Being Task Force at Pennsylvania Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs. Um, she is involved in multiple health initiatives locally and in India. And she is the recipient of many local and national um, awards. And our third judge is Sally Handlin. Sally is the founder of Handlin Business Resources, LLC, a short-term project management partner to executives and business owners in implementing the long overdue recommendations to move the company forward. Sally has been an active member of both the Lehigh Valley business and nonprofit communities for more than 40 years with a particular focus on wellness and environment. Among her many accolades, Sally was named Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation MVP, a, YM, a YWCA of Bethlehem Woman of the Year, and a Lehigh Valley um, Suites Award winner for uh, management consulting. There are so many more um, accolades that could be given to each one of our judges, but I just want you to know 
that these are heavy hitters and these are very important people in the community and they are committed to giving back and serving. So without further ado, <laughs> let me say that we're ready to hear each and every one of the individuals representing their companies today. Thank you. This is a very impressive table. I think we should hobnob over there after this event, Dr. Richardson, okay? Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Kepner. I'll be the moderator tonight. I am the director of the Multimedia Innovation Center here at Penn State Lehigh Valley, and we've been lucky enough to work with a lot of the um, recipients the Launchbox recipients, uh, ladies' Launchbox recipients over the years. So it's excited to see everybody's projects and proposals come to fruition. And, and it's just very, I'm, I feel very honored to be asked to do this tonight. So this is how the competition is going to work. Each contestant was asked to create a five-minute pitch, and they'll be timed. And we have a, I believe it's an iPad timer. There you go. Don't let it go to black. OK, there, you already did it. You're fired. Get out of here. OK. Andrea, we have to find a replacement. Um, so they'll be timed, they have five minutes, they practice, they've got this. You've got this, you've got this, ladies. Okay, and then after they do their, yes, a round of applause. Here you go. See, three applause is always good. Okay, so, and then the judges will be able to ask them questions about their pitch proposal. So we're gonna start things off with our first contestant, Dr. Janir Hankerson. Thank you. Oh, there's so much to remember up here. Smile, be funny, fucking like muffin top. So, oh, should I? Okay. I'll, we learned all this stuff already, right? Okay, so that's me. Okay, so, um, now, okay, now we're starting. Thank you. So, I'll start over again. There's so much to remember up here. Smile, be funny, suck in my muffin top. Uh, I'll try to hit two out of three while I'm pitching my business, Dr. J's Comedy Milieu, named after myself. Yes, I am a doctor. Calm down, I'm not that kind of doctor. I can't like save your life or anything. Um, my doctorate's in education, which means I'm still broke. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm pretty proud to be standing as an official doctorate. Um, I did have this recurring nightmare while I was doing my research that something would happen and I wouldn't be able to finish and I'd get awarded an honorary doctorate. Like, ill, gross, it's my teeth itch. Okay, so did anyone do anything fun over the pandemic? No? Well, like everyone, we all had to find new sources of entertainment. Um, there were multiple drops in entertainment. The uh, movie industry had a drop in 2020, 2021 live concerts, they also had a drop in 2020 and 2021. And the one that personally hit home was comedy clubs. They closed, disappeared, vanished in thin air. That personally hit home for me. Um, so my business, Dr. J's Comedy Milieu, looks to fill that entertainment void. And we offer engaging, original, and um, entertainment sources. So we have trivia shows, game shows, and for the academics, professional development. So some of our strengths are uh, we're engaging. So everything that we offer, it can be done either virtually or in person, because over the last three years, who hasn't learned how to use Zoom? And we offer personalization. If I ask someone, what's your favorite TV series? Throw something out. Succession. Okay, so you tell me your favorite series is Succession. So I'll make a trivia show all about Succession just for you. And another strength is we offer immediate feedback. Um, I have a real time uh, score leaderboard so that everyone playing the trivia games and the game show, they can see who's in the lead, who has the highest score, who has bragging rights. 
and everyone who participates in the professional development gets immediate feedback on the techniques and routines that they use. Some of the limitations are growing the client base, um, lack of physical space. Right now, we're kind of at the mercy of any um, venue that will rent to us, or um, I can go, I can actually do it virtually, or I can go to someone's place of, like their home or their business, and perform there. And right now, it's just me. So I would have to hire someone uh, who has a background in comedy or who's willing to learn, who could help assist with putting on the trivia shows and the game shows. Um, so some of our target markets, um, clients looking to spend quality time with either family members, friends, or coworkers. Uh, trivia shows and game shows are good bonding experiences. Um, clients who want personalized entertainment with, mul with minimal effort. Again, you tell me your favorite show, I'll do all the work. You get to have all the fun. Um, definitely looking at clients who are familiar with electronic devices, smartphones, laptops, computers, because you will need to use those to participate, and educators, public speakers, and leaders. So the pricing model, uh, there's two different tiers, one for virtual and one for in, per in person, because there's different costs associated with each. Uh, so this is the pricing model for the trivia shows and the game shows, and then for the professional development. And also the professional development, I am an Act 48 approved provider, so anyone that takes the course with us will receive professional development credits. And one last thing, you're probably thinking what makes me qualified to you know, run comedy shows and game shows. A um, little bit about myself, I've been a comedy writer since 2011, been a stand-up comedian, I performed at Comedy Plots and Music Fest 2019-2021. Um, I've been a game show host. I created my original game show, Friend, Family, Follower, the comedy game show. And I created sketch shows, I performed improv, and like I said earlier, my doctorate in education, my research focus on um, teachers using comedy in a classroom, student engagement, and learning theory. And that's my time. You have a pretty diverse market that you're going after. Is there a priority to whether you're going after the individual consumer or you're going after the professional development? Um, right now, there's no precise um, target that I would go for. Um, I do like providing both the trivia games and the professional development. So I think both could, could go either way. So, you know, if, if you happen to be in, in education, like you would like the professional development because it's, it's a new form of professional development. I've worked in schools for a while and I know that teacher in-service days are not very fun. Um, so, you know, th this would be something new. And then for the trivia and the game shows, it just gives someone a new option of, you know, having some form of enter entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along those lines, uh, can you tell me about how you validated your product or service maybe here in the Lehigh Valley first? I know you gave a list uh, in your slide about uh, you've hosted uh, a show and you've done stand-up comedy, but like, but like where exactly is it? Is it in this area, in this region? And, and just a little bit more on the market demand that you see? Um, I have performed here in the region uh, locally. I, um, I've done multiple shows. I've done over 57 shows right, right here in the Valley. Um, I've performed at open mics. I've done, like I said, Music Fest. I've done multiple shows um, at the Arts Quest Center, and I've done multiple shows online on, on my own. A quick question about marketing. How do you market yourself? Um, usually social media marketing. Um, I'm very active on um, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. I like to advertise there and a lot of word of mouth. So whenever I have contestants on the game show, I make sure that they have marketing materials that they can post and they can share and everything. And I always get everyone else involved. When I have the game shows and I'll have four contestants, I always make a marketing video to post before because I think the video raises more engagement. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So 
I know you listed a limitation as to growing your client base. Yes. But can you tell me more specifically how you have been trying to do that beyond the marketing that you just elaborated on? Um, just trying to get it out there more, you know, contests like this, try, trying to get out more and basically just trying to get more people involved offering my services and going to different venues and telling them like, hey, this is, this is what I can do. You know, we can help each other out because if I can host a show at a venue, I can bring more people in. So it's, it's a lot of networking right now and just getting out there and just talking to people. And where would you like to see yourself in three years with this business? Um, in three years, I'd like to have my own space so that I can host comedy shows and in professional development at any time and not have to worry about securing a venue from someone else. Um, and just being able to do it more regularly, I'd like to have a regular monthly trivia show. Um, I'm really big on themes, so I already have a list of themed trivia shows that I, I would like to do. So just, just being able to do something regularly and monthly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, if anyone wants to follow me, here's my socials and everything. Thank you. Now, we've all seen the commercials telling you to call the 800 number for assistance with your Medicare. Do we really want former actors and athletes advising our seniors on Medicare? I don't think so. The problem with Medicare is it can be very complex. It's intimidating and very scary. And most people don't even know what they're facing. I mean, you're inundated with mail and telephone calls. You're getting different advice from everyone around you on different things that you should do. You realize that this decision is far too important to get wrong, especially when questions come up like, Will I get a penalty if I don't apply at 65? Am I picking the right plan? Who can I call with my questions about Medicare? Who can I trust? Well, hello, my name is Ramona Harris with Trinity Senior Solutions. I've been a Medicare advisor for well over a decade and I'm an expert in the field of Medicare. It is my goal, it is my goal to provide you with peace of mind when you're making decisions about your Medicare options. And I do all of this at no cost to you. First, what I do is I educate you on the, on the parts of Medicare, how they work, and all of the costs associated with them. And then I provide you with all the plans that are available to you so you can make the most informed decision on what type of plan would work best for you. I become like your one-stop shop or your advocate for all your Medicare decisions. So that you don't have to spend a lot of time researching all the different plans and benefits because I do that for you. Um, I work with all the different types of Medicare plans as well as numerous respected carriers. In addition, I offer customer service through the life of the plan. So you'll never have to call another 800 number, press 20 prompts to get a live person to try to ask the question. You can just call me and I'll go to the carrier on your behalf and resolve any issues that may arise. And to top it off, I do all of this at a zero cost to you. If you select a plan, the carrier pays us. So my services are at no cost to all of my clients. 
1965, Lyndon Johnson signed Medicare into existence. Right now, there are over 65 million people on Medicare. So most people turn Medicare, I mean, I'm sorry, most people are eligible for Medicare when they turn 65. Some people continue working and apply for Medicare later. There are others who just want to compare their Medicare plan to other plans that are available. Regardless of what your situation is, I can help you with any challenges you face when dealing with Medicare whether you're already on or making that transition over to Medicare. So, like I said, I've been an agent for a long time, but in 2014, I went to work for a company as an independent agent. And that's where I discovered my passion for helping and educating consumers on Medicare. Just hearing the relief in my clients and the satisfaction when they know that they've served the right, that they've found the right plan for their specific healthcare needs and budget. So that feeling is like priceless to me, and it confirms that I'm doing what I was called to do. So when I look around, I don't see Joe Montana or Jimmy Walker screaming dynamite about your Medicare choices. So you can just call Ramona Harris, and I will help you to navigate through your entire journey of Medicare. Why? Because we make Medicare easy. Ramona, who do you see as your main competition for doing this work? Well, I see that... There are a few, but there are not like major companies. Most people, they just, you know, sell like, I work for Aetna or I work for Capital, but I work like a broker and I work with all the different companies, all the different types of plans. So there are a few companies out there, but it's not like a major thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Um, how do you envision scaling up a business like yours? Like, would you, or would you always stick to Medicare? How, how do you envision, like, your future, what are your future plans then? Well, I'm always going to specialize in Medicare because I love it, and I love the clients, and I love everything it comes with. But, you know, I do final expense and some dental vision hearing and things like that, but my specialty is always going to be Medicare because I enjoy working with people that are on Medicare because they're confused and they need to understand. Are you solo right now or? Yeah, I'm solo, but when I worked for the company I used to work for and I was there for nine years, I did exactly what I'm doing now, how I'm doing it with the different companies and everything. So I'm real familiar with how it works. And when I started at that company, I was their first agent. So now they have like 15. So now I know I watched them build the company from scratch. So I kind of went through trial and error with them. I kind of know what works and what doesn't. And so I'm kind of using that as my platform to move forward. And is it uh, referral based or how do you get the clients? Well, it's networking and referral based. When I was there, I had over 1,200 clients. So. Since I was a W-2, I had to leave my book of business. So now that's why I know all these nice ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm networking, and the people that I have gotten with so far, you know, I've met, and they're get, I'm starting to get referrals from the first people. So it's working out just like it did there. Awesome. That's wonderful. And do you also have non-English speaking clients? Um, Unfortunately, I only speak English. Right. The company did, but right now for me, I mean, eventually when I move forward, that would be an avenue that I would select. My first agent that I go on with, I would want them to be bilingual so that we can serve a big majority community. of the community. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Ramon. 
I have another question about your revenue model. And so you were saying that the clients don't pay you only until they actually sign up, and then it's the... No, they, the, they don't pay me at all. Mm -hmm. The carrier pays me. The carrier. So if I sign them up for Capital Blue, Capital Blue pays me. And they would pay the exact same amount if they went directly to Capital Blue or it came through me. But if they come through me, they get the benefit of the service moving forward. So I take no money. Hmm. How did you arrive at the business name for this organization? It's something that's in my heart. Okay. I saw a lot of Trinity when I was looking you up on the internet, so that's why I was wondering how you came upon that. All right, our next contestant is Christina Oyola. Yay. <laughs> There's another binder. Oh boy. Hold on. It's for a second. Can you hear me? Okay, let's see. There's some paper. Oh, this thing. Oh, that's me. All right. We ready? You ready? No. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Show of hands. How many coffee drinkers do we have in the audience today? Wow. I'm among my people. By the way, if you're enjoying the coffee that was provided today, you're enjoying that day's organic blend called Tuesday. Because having the case of the Tuesdays, or the case of the Mondays, I mean, is old news. Again, show of hands, how many people feel it's important to support female service members and first responders? Okay, that's almost all of you. Now again, raise your hands, how many of you know that female service members and first responders struggle to feel safe and heard? Okay, looks like I got some work to do. You can put your hands down now. My name is Christina Oyola, I'm a disabled female veteran and the founder of That Day Company. That Day Company is committed to making a positive impact on the world through our twofold mission. First is by supporting female service members and first responders, and second by changing the coffee industry by bringing people together and making a positive impact. With every bag of coffee you purchase, you're helping to do just that by helping give back to those who have served our country. As a female veteran looking for a safe, inclusive surrounding place, I started an online support group for female veterans, where I very soon learned that we needed organization, structure, and a way to vet our female veterans. After listening to the female feedback, I realized the genuine need for a secure free membership platform for female service members and first responders. To ensure a safe and trusting environment, we will conduct background checks and verify the identity and tenure of our female members. With the proceeds from tonight's prize, I plan to finish developing my website and my free membership program. This will enable us to launch our travel coffee chat, which will connect female veterans and first responders with valuable resources within their own community. In the future, our goal is to expand our services to offer a wide range of individual and group options, which include self-defense, leadership, writing, and even options at local horse farms. We are actively seeking to partner with like-minded organizations to provide a unique experience, especially for our female veterans, <laughs> service members. As a company founded by a female vet, I am passionate about supporting my fellow female service members and first responders. That's why a portion of that day's company's profits goes towards supporting those incentives that I spoke about prior. Our coffee bags start at $22 a bag, reminding us of the 22 veterans we lose to suicide each day. When I was a little girl, I used to practice writing my name in cursive. My dad used to tell me I could be anything I wanted to be, and someday I was going to own the family trucking company. Despite some trials and tribulations along the way, I never gave up on that dream. I faced the, nope. Upon a suggestion from my boyfriend, he reminded me of a few things, and then I realized that day has come. Again, my name is Christina Oyola, and I'm the founder and CEO of That Day Company, and I thank you for your time. Woo! 
now that that's done. <laughs> Christina, are you currently doing things now with coffee and the uh, Yes, veterans? I am currently doing a little bit of everything. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? Officially, I have been an LLC since about March. Um, I believe I started selling, I sold my first uh, a bag of coffee to my mentor, John, who I met at a pitch perf or pitch thing um, about two months ago, I want to say. So I've been actively having my own product with my own label through my dropshipper for about two months. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Christina. What are the major challenges you anticipate facing in the market, and how do you plan to overcome them? That's a very good question. So a lot of the challenges are the same challenges the resources that I go to are facing. Us female veterans and first responders don't really want to leave our house and go to these resources where we don't know where they are located, who's going to be there, what type of safety measures are in place. So trying to create that same atmosphere in a travel type um, an online experience is going to be a challenge, but I have um, linked up with a nonprofit that is here in Lehigh Valley called Battleborn. Some of you might know who they are. Um, they do a lot of great resources. Um, we've talked about Co doing a bag of coffee with their logo and my stuff to help me get going, but also they just launched their MST, which is a military sexual trauma program, and they are gonna need the females. So I, a lot of females trust me, and they, you know, they take me on my word. So I've built a community over the last three years from this. Christina, how many members do you have in the group right now? So actively, we do not have a current membership. I want to make sure that's what the, the proceeds and the funds will help get the membership portal set up on the website. And then once we can start verifying females and get the legal documents set up, then next week. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a pricing model that you have in mind for membership, or is it free? What so, thank you. I, I must have flew right over that part. <laughs> so, um, the membership would be free for our female service members and first responders. They would go through like an application process. It will be an exclusive, like invitation only society. I want to make it a national holiday. I want to make it something that turns into a franchise option and they can take their coffee and, you know, it's exclusive for the female veterans and first responders. So we're talking 10 years roastery. We, we, got, we got it all. Can you um, explain the, the mobile part of what you want to do? Yes. So like I said, the Battleborn is here in Lehigh Valley. They have resource centers that they have set up. They have people that come there. They have all of these things. What they're lacking is the females. So the travel part would be, I would use funds, say, you know, a group of 10 of us decide that we're going to come to Battleborn's MST program. We're, you know, we're traveling, I travel an hour and a half to get here. So, you know, gas tolls. So with our funds, we would provide when they got here, they would sign and everything, a gas card or something to get them to the location. Then they'll know that that program is specifically designed for our members. So when they come in like Battleborn, again, I go back to them because they're Lehigh. They're who I'm really trying to really connect with. They have a buzzer outside of their one building that you have to buzz in and be seen on a camera to get into their safe space. So can you imagine like being a female with trauma and wanting to go to a safe space and talk about something sensitive and not knowing what, you know, what kind of environment or people are around you? Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. All right, we are now uh, ready for our fourth contestant of the night, Habiba Diaby. When I was pregnant, my poor husband had to drive all the way to New York, New Jersey, or Philadelphia 
just to find me authentic West African food. <laughs> I saw the pain firsthand. As I look around, I realize that there was a thousand of people in the Lehigh Valley with the same problem like me. We love that company. We start that startup to solve the problem. We bought the solution, and here is an castle, which means my home in my West African language. We serve over 30 authentic West African dish like fufu, jollof rice, and more. We strive to serve people in the Lehigh Valley who like to try different type of food, like ethnic food. Our specific target is working people from 25 to 55 who like to eat out as, at least once a week. My name is Habiba Diaby. I am the owner and chef of the new African restaurant in Allentown, downtown on 8th and Linden Street. Our food is unique, tasty, and healthy. It's so unique that a few weeks ago, we received a family from Reading because the youngest children want to try fufu since long time ago. And we receive a lot of family like that. Most of our dishes are gluten-free and also our homemade drinks also our homemade drinks have a lot of also our homemade drinks have a lot of uh, healthy parts like rich in iron, vitamins and more. We are selling in store, online, on social media, and also with platforms like GrubHub, DoorDash. We are building a strong relationship with our customers by getting to know them, listening to them, what they need, accepting their feedback, and also we are building a community on social media we, where we have more than 800 followers. In addition to breakfast, lunch, and dining, we are also offering catering service. Also, we receive people for organization meeting, Kwanzaa celebration, birthday party, and our guests for birthday party can wear African king or queen outfit. We believe that having a strong partnership in the community is important. Encaso partners with Downtown Allenton Business Alliance, the Rising Tide Community Loan Fund, and the Chamber of Commerce.
Hello, and thank you. Um, how long have you been in business at the 8th and Linden Street location? We have been in business since January of this month, like six months ago. Okay, and before that, did you have a, a truck or a location? Before that, I was um, taking order online and delivering by myself. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Habiba. You're welcome. I would like to know what stands out about all the activities you've been doing for the last six months. Like, what are some key accomplishments that you feel really, really, really proud about that you want to share with us? Like, we receive a lot of customers who always think has to be here because they was looking for West African dishes, authentic West African dishes since long time ago. And that's, that one make me very proud of myself. And also when I saw people um, like exciting about the food, about our ideas, like wearing African king outfit or queen outfit, and like seeing um, the customers just happy to come to Nkaso. A quick question, uh, Habiba. Are you the only chef or do you have help? For now, I'm the only chef, but we are planning to hire more. Well, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and um, are there any other African food restaurants in the valley? In the Lehigh Valley, we have one East African restaurant, but right now, Nkaso is only the only one West African restaurant in the Lehigh Valley. So can you just highlight the differences, uh, East versus West, the food uh, preferences? The can you, what is the difference in uh, food between East and West Africa? Um, Africa is too big, and <laughs> <laughs> and in like East Africa, we 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 really don't have the same um, like type of dishes, and um, I'm not like really familiar with their dishes, but West African food is so popular that when someone open an East African restaurant, they have to have West African dishes like fufu, egusi, jollof rice, because West African food is the most popular. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for educating us. This was helpful. <laughs> thank you. Who in here is hungry right now? <laughs> right. Oh, bring it. You should have little uh, things to pass around. Um, last but not least, we've had great pitches. Um, our final contestant of our first annual Launchbox Ladies Women in Business competition is Latoya Hutchinson. I didn't get the lesson on how to work this. I probably should have done that. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 here, let me grab there you go. Okay. Is it to the right then? Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Latoya Hutchinson, and I am the owner of Wixquisite Candles, where we are handmade with happiness. We take your basic candle and turn it into a memorable work of art. That's perfect for gift giving, which is why we refer to ourselves as the candle gift shop. So if I can ask just anyone to shout out, what is the most frustrating thing about gift shopping to you? Ideas, what they like, any one time, things like that, okay. Well, Exquisite Candles is the solution. With us, we add personal touch from custom colors to your scents and your labels. Uniqueness and creativity with our one-of-a-kind artistic candle designs that make them so much more meaningful. We pay attention to specific, excuse me, we pay attention to detail which adds that sentimental value. And last but not least, speed. 
we can make most custom designs in two hours or less. And our prices started low as low as $10. So what will this grant and experience do for my small business? For starters, it's going to help me to secure more supplies so we can expand in two areas. One of the first um, expansions that we'd like to add is something we call candlegrams. I've been sitting on this idea for like four years, and now it's time to put it forth. And that's going to be something along the lines of an edible arrangement. So you'll be able to go on our website, pick out a candle from a category, like sympathy or just because, congratulations. Um, and then you'll be able to add a personal message to that. We've even figured out a way to implement voice, so you'll be able to add a song to that as well. Don't ask, that's all top secret. <laughs> and the other thing we're doing now in our current state are candle workshops, where we're giving the same experience that, that I share making these candles to other people who are interested in doing the same thing. So the way we would like to expand in that area is with our workshops now, we have figured out a way to kind of keep you going back and forth. There's no real drying time wait with um, the way that we kind of have the classes set up. But there are people who are reaching out for just basic candle making. I never offer that right now because the drying time is like, what do you do in that? So a lot of companies have uh, worked on wax and wine, things like that. But what about the people who don't drink or aren't interested in that in the moment? You're just sitting there with boredom. Or if you didn't come with friends, you're just sitting there waiting for it to dry. So one of the ways that I want to work with other small businesses and incorporate that during that dry time, I would like to have a mini yoga session or a small comedy <laughs> class or spoken word, different things like that. So these are just some of the things I've done and what I'm doing now. Oh, that's me. I'm making a coffee candle. <laughs> so here's something, another uh, avenue that I have that I do now is um, I do company branded candles because I can make these kind of artistic designs. I obviously can make a basic candle as well. So I do promotional. This is Fire's Kitchen, who actually is a part of Northampton Community College in their culinary program right now. These are just some of the other designs that I do. I'm just gifts here. So as I said, with all of that, of course, we're going to take the grant, if we could gain that, and also invest in updating our website to be able to match those changes, and then also marketing. So here's some things. Uh, I did that for the, for the perfect fit, Allentown, actually. Somebody was really obsessed with their dog, so there's that. Um, <laughs> and these are the workshop pictures here. OK, so there's that part. So why is sharing happiness so important to me? And why do I spell it with a Y? Because I'm sure everybody who's gone to college here is like, does she really not only spell it with a Y, but then capitalize it? <laughs> right? So here's the inspiration for that, if you haven't noticed it. The pursuit of happiness was one of my biggest inspirations. It's tattooed right here on my wrist so that I see it every day. Um, the story is about Chris Gardner and combating his way from homelessness um, into stockbroker and now motivational speaker um, with his son. So it's portrayed here with Will Smith and his son, Jaden Smith. This is my story. So that's my little girl, Ava, my firstborn. I raised her in the Sixth Street shelter when she was just four months old, excuse me, four weeks old. And I was 20 years old at the time. Um, and then from the Salvation Army, we went to the Sixth Street shelter. From there, we were accepted into the transitional housing program um, on Turner Street. But one of the pivotal quotes uh, that I heard in the movie that was Chris Gardner's life-changing um, quote also changed my life. And I don't know by, by heart, because that one's not tattooed on me, so I have to reference it. So all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it was at that moment that he realized, sometimes you're just not given a happy situation. You're not dealt the best deck of, you know, the hand from the best deck of cards. And that was my story. But he realized he could change that, and that's exactly what he did. And that's why that movie inspired me so much. Um, and it's that my time? OK. That's me. If I could just really quickly say, being really happy I had a good hair day, and it didn't involve a wig. Um, <laughs> and if I could just throw this in, I made gifts. This is for Trinity Senior Solutions with Scrub Tops, iced coffee for That Day Company, uh, Nicasa with the, with the Africa there, and for uh, Dr. J's Comedy Milieu. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> And I'll take your questions. Thank you so much, Leila. Thank you. Where do you conduct your workshops now? OK, so right now I have um, just a small workshop that I'm working out of. It's on 13th and Hamilton. Um, the candles are, I don't have a store that I sell them in, but you can pick up there. Um, there's another store in downtown Allentown, uh, fairly new. Last year it opened up, called A Little Bit of Local. And the candles are sold there as well, along with 70 other like handmade vendors. 
Um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, around how much are, are these candles? I, I just wanted to know a little bit more about the pricing. Sure. So for the most part, I would say they're between about 20 to 35. Um, but because I custom everything, that's why I did reference, I can make them as low as 10, just depending on what you're looking for. Okay, and just really quick, I, I wanna repeat a question I had asked um, previously. What are some major challenges that you, you have faced in, in the, the market and like how do you plan to overcome them? <laughs> It's a challenge right now. Summer is a very challenging month, especially with our workshops. People are ready to get outside. So um, during that time, it's really hard to get people in seats, which is what we're doing um, you know, with our workshops. It's all indoors. We can't do any of the outdoors. The other challenge is because we sell candles, the wax sensitivity and the heat. So the summer months have become really hard, which is why we're rolling into the new idea of candlegrams, because there's always an occasion. You don't just have children in the cold season, so we're, we're trying to expand uh, into different areas that will serve throughout the year. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Latoya. But a uh, quick question. So for the workshops, do yes. you charge? Is there any I do. For participation, and how much is that? I do. So they're usually around $55. Um, there are some locations, actually every location that I've ever done these, I've been asked to do it. I just got a contract with Northampton Community College where I'll be hosting those um, this coming fall season. Um, and the workshops, I've been, people have been finding out about it since I've done Sleepy Cat Winery, and I've done that several times, and I just keep getting asked to do these, so. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you. So would you say your marketing is word of mouth now? How else are you getting the word out? So the marketing for sure is word of mouth. Um, it tends to create like, ooh, let me put this on social media. Then they post it, and I'm tagged in it, and it goes from there. Or um, people who have already ordered or received or when someone's looking for something custom or a realtor needs something custom for their clients, it goes that way. But when I do classes, especially for, like I said, the start of Sleepy Cat Winery, other distilleries have reached out, and people who want this in their location. So. Okay, and how long have you been doing this, and are you getting repeat business? I am now, yeah. So I've been at this for about five years. I got kicked out of the kitchen in my house, and yeah, two years into that. Um, so I would say solidly, I've um, been doing it for the past three years. But the workshops, I just started on a roll. Um, I started my first class during 2020. So that's what I was doing during the pandemic, since you asked that question earlier, in 2020. And then I just got on a queue with doing the workshops this January, and they have really taken off. Thank you, Latoya. Mm -hmm, thank you. I have another question about intellectual property. Absolutely. You know, so how would you be able to protect like the the candy candle gram and some other things that you said were top secret? <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, right? So if I were to win, <laughs> I would use that uh, to obtain services to help me kind of go through the channels, which is why I don't say too much about like my next ideas, just so that I can protect them and go about it the right way. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Five great pitches. So now it's time for our judges to confer. We'll turn that microphone off. Did you get that? Perfect. Wonderful. Um, and again, this isn't going to be easy. Everybody tonight was wonderful. So while they're doing that, we wanted to you know, introduce the people that were kind of behind the scenes at helping some of our contestants work on their pitches. Um, we have so many great coaches. Uh, Jonathan Epstein. Hi. <laughs> Javadi Crawford. Yeah. And Rita Guthrie. Thank you guys, you did a great job. All of our contestants were wonderful tonight. Um, if you wanna know more about Ladies Lunchbox in general, or you want to know how you can join in in next year's competition, Cindy Evans, where is she? There she is. Cindy Evans is the person to talk to, she's your point person. And now Cindy is gonna announce our sponsors and thank them too. We have a lot of people to thank tonight. <laughs> So, LaToya, just so you know, one of our mastermind sessions is on intellectual properties. So we'll get you hooked up. But what do you have to do to be part of the masterminds group? 
That's a really good question, Jonathan. Thank you for bringing that up. It's got to be a fortune to attend those things. <laughs> So Jonathan, you must have been missing part of my presentation earlier when I said that our mastermind sessions and our brainstorming sessions are part of Launchbox Lehigh Valley, and they are at no cost, no cost to Pennsylvania residents or businesses. And thank you for talking about the, bringing up the no cost, the legal intellectual property we utilize Penn State's legal clinic. Yes. That come with the cost? That doesn't come with the cost either. So what's stopping people? It's unbelievable. Jonathan, you and I need to get out there and talk about Launchbox. Just need him in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I am so thrilled that he was one of the pitch people that helped our um, our individuals with their pitches. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about Launchbox and Le Lehigh Valley Launchbox. So during the 2022 and 2023 program year, Leah Valley Launchbox provided services to more than 100 entrepreneurs, and we are proud to engage over 25 volunteer experts who are willing to go above and beyond, just like Jonathan. Just like so many people here. Exactly, just like everybody sitting in this room. Our Lehigh Valley Launchbox would not be sustainable, and we could not do this without our individuals who are sitting in this room, our longstanding corporate and ambassador circle sponsors. Our corporate sponsors, including people like PPL, Corporation, Box Rexroth, Victaulic, Butch Corporation, and First Commonwealth Federal Credit Union. And you, if you would like to be a sponsor, Throughout the venue, you will see little brochures, little flyers. Please think about filling them out and becoming one of our sponsors. Do we have other questions that we can address while the audience, uh, I'm sorry, not while the audience, while the judges are talking? Yes, Rita. Oh, another plant. <laughs> Some of the upcoming programs that we're planning for the fall for Launchbox Ladies. That's a great question, Rita. Do you want to take it? <laughs> I've never been to a Launchbox Ladies event. Okay, they're great. They're free. They could launch. There's always a panel discussion within the theme related to entrepreneurship. And if you registered for tonight, you're going to be on the mailing list and be notified when the next one is, which is sometime in September, October, I don't know, it's off the top of my head. But pay attention to them. They're really, really wonderful. How would you get on that listing and the masterminds listing? Well, that's a good question, too, because Launchbox has an email. lvlaunchbox.com. Send me an email. I'll get you on the mailing list. We will make sure that you understand and are notified when our masterminds and our brainstorming sessions are. We'll make sure you're notified when our Launchbox Ladies series takes place. And next year, when we're able to do a second annual pitch competition, we can ask some of these women to come back and help you pitch your product. So we are looking forward to doing this again next year. We will continue to have our programs and please feel free to get on our mailing list, see what else we have to provide. There are also brochures in the back 
regarding our idea test lab. Individuals will sign up for our idea test lab. It is a online program. It will take place during Tuesday evenings and you will have advice to about your business. Here's your idea. What are some things you need to be concerned about? And here is where you would go while you're starting that business. I see Jonathan has another question. Well, it really wasn't a question so much, but I'm not so big into email. And I just wanted to follow Lehigh Valley Lawn Lawns on my socials. Like, is it as easy as just typing in Lehigh Valley Lawn Box on LinkedIn and following it and on Facebook? Yes, it is. It is not harder than that. And I post all kinds of things. You would have seen pictures of all of these individuals. I'll, I'll bet that people in the audience right now who aren't on Lehigh Valley Launchbox on LinkedIn are missing out. And now would probably be a great time to launch this app and friend it on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever is their social of choice. Am I, am I, I'm, I'm sorry, am I speaking out of turn? You are so not speaking out of turn. And do you know, Jonathan, if you go to the search button on your LinkedIn, you will be able to pull up a QR code for Launchbox, Le for Lehigh Valley Launchbox. Look, if you just type in Lehigh Valley Launchbox, it just comes right up. It does. <laughs> it does. And then you click, there's a follow button. Mine has a check mark because I already follow it. Oh, but I would, I would bet that today is a great day and right now is a great opportunity for people to stay engaged with what you guys are doing. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be hogging the floor here. <laughs> it is hey, true. Wait. Christina, there's pictures and videos in the feed? I'm sure tomorrow there's going to be updates on what happened today. Do you have to pay for this kind of new oh one? Wouldn't it be great if you could all be millionaires? Oh my goodness. Folks, it's all free? It's unbelievable. And you can tag your friends in it too so they can. They don't have to look very far. That's a, so they can now connect. Oh my goodness. Oh and my goodness. And it, it's all free. It's unbelievable. And when I post pictures and videos, I will tag our pitch competitors. Can we be sure he's in every one of our audience? Um, yes. Uh, it is a good thing that Jonathan is one of our committee members. We love that Jonathan is on our programs committee. Because I follow you guys on LinkedIn. Oh, you got that around. All right. Well, welcome to the moment we've been waiting for. The announcements of the winners of our first annual pitch, Launchbox Ladies Pitch Competition. After anticipation and intense deliberation, ha ha, the judges have made their decision. <laughs> but before we proceed, ha 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 ha, let's take a moment to celebrate the incredible passion innovation and dedication shown by each and every participant. This competition has been a testament to the power of ideas and the entrepreneurial spirit that drives us forward. Okay. Now, without further ado, let's unveil the individuals who have emerged victorious. Thank you. Our runner-up being awarded $1,500. Our first runner-up is Janir Hankerson, Dr. J's Comedy Mulling. Woo! Do you want to come up and pick this? Come up and join us on stage. I know, we did not practice this part, did we? <laughs> That's okay, it's going with the flow. You're an entrepreneur, right? right. All right, good. No, yeah, it's all good. All right. And our first place winner, the person who stood out among our outstanding field of competitors, being awarded $2,500. <gasps> 
it's LaToya Hutchinson from Wix's and Candles. Um, Isaac, can we get this off so we can get a picture without that going on? <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, huh. Please join me in congratulating the triumphant champions of our first annual pitch competition. To all our participants, whether you secured a first place or not, your dedication and commitment are truly commendable. Please keep in touch with Launchbox Lehigh Valley. We have a lot of services to offer you. Remember, your innovation knows no bounds, and this competition has only marked the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you to everyone who contributed to the success of this night. We look forward to witnessing the continued growth and success of all of the businesses represented to here. Congratulations once again to all of our winners and may your dreams come true.